can mindfulness change your life? Absolutely. And I'm going to share with you the story of how I discovered the real impact of mindfulness on my life. It was bizarre. It was like looking through time at myself a few years ago. It's the fall of 1992. I just started my consulting practice a few months ago and I'm finalizing a proposal for what I hope will be my first major contract in partnership with another consultant. And as I'm working on the proposal, I'm looking at the me I was a few years ago, paced in and out of my office, stress radiating out of him like a lightning storm. In the late 80s, I worked with a broadcasting company based in Western Canada, transforming the way the whole organization worked across the country. It was amazing work and I loved it, but I was the poster child for workaholism. I <laughs> finally burned out and I decided to come back where I grew up in Nova Scotia to recharge and to reconnect with family. I took jobs teaching at a couple of the universities here for three years. And while I loved working with the kids, I abhorred the bureaucracy. Also, because I only had a MBA and not a PhD, compensation and job security were a joke. Over those three years, I took time to breathe and do a lot of personal work to defuse those workaholic programs in my head. I spent long hours marking assignments for the students. I don't believe in multiple guest tests, so I had them do case studies and projects with real companies to build strategies. And I gave detailed feedback so they'd know what they did well and what to change when in the real world. However, compared to my corporate days, <laughs> These hours were a walk in the park. When I moved back to Nova Scotia, I had chronic fatigue. And it took a lot of internal work, as well as diet and other things, to get me back on track and break the workaholic cycle. But I finally remembered how to enjoy life. I took programs to help me understand myself and better understand what my passion was and how to follow it. I loved the change in strategy work I did in the corporate world and I loved helping my students unlock and discover what they hadn't dreamed they could learn or do. Somehow I wanted to bring the two of those together. So this spring in the middle of a massive recession, with most of my business contacts across the country, I decided to take the leap and instead of going back in the corporate world directly, started my own consulting firm to do the change and strategy work I loved. Another consultant I knew, Bob, had an office in a brand new high rise in town and he had a spare office he rented to me. And the last six months consisted of me out there making contacts and promoting and spending all my savings. Last week, a friend of mine let me know about this contract that was coming up for tender. And Bob and I decided to partner on it. We've been working on it all week and the deadline is in three hours. I've spent most of the day pulling together our work and typing it into the final proposal because I can type and Bob, even though he's the senior consultant, can't. Now, Bob is 30 years older than me. He's worked extensively in the corporate world in the human resources area and has been consulting for two years. In terms of experience, he's way beyond what I bring to the table. But his behavior today is, let's say, intriguing. What I've discovered is that despite having a PhD in psychology, he is not great at managing stress and uncertainty. As I've been working away at the computer, he's been carving a path between his office and mine, 
crumbling away like Yosemite Sam when Bugs Bunny eluded him for the tenth time, snapping at me for not being further ahead, and then stalking off down his well-worn pathway, grumbling until he returns a moment or two later. That's when I had the sudden realization. That was me just a few years ago. <laughs> Holy camoli. Stressed to the max, not knowing how to manage it, and just running around like a chicken with my head cut off. That's how I lived life, deluding myself and others into thinking I thrived on the busyness. And here I am now, calmly typing away, zero stress, just working away, and with even a little excitement at how well this is coming together. I can feel we're going to win this contract. I know exactly how this is coming together and how much time it'll take. It'll be close, but I'll have enough time to print it off and drive to where it needs to be submitted. And all this while, Bob comes in and out, buzzing like an angry hornet. And just like a hornet, I leave him alone, because I know if I engage him, he'll explode. This is a big insight into who he is and how he works under pressure. And I've already made the decision that this will be our first and last contract together. The words, there but for the grace of God, go through my head. But I realize it's not about God. It's about me investing the last three years before the next storm hit to prepare myself so I can better manage myself and the next storm of my life. I'm finished and I print it off and I drive to the office where I need to submit it with 20 minutes to spare. I know we're gonna get this and I feel the elation surging through me as I head off to celebrate with friends tonight. And I did get the contract. I did. Uh, and we did an amazing job on it. But the biggest, biggest insight for me was that time with Bob. It was honestly like looking through a window in time and seeing how I had been and how just three years had enabled me to bring mindfulness into enough of a practice that it really, truly changed my life. Uh, and, and honestly, it, I, I've never experienced it that starkly where, where I had what seemed to be me from the past and me in the present colliding to show how much of an impact it had. And that was just three years, 30 years ago. Since then, I've done more and more to deepen my practice, to find more about how mindfulness can impact us, to find those little Jedi mind tricks that influence just a little bit of change, that change everything so much more than you can imagine. And that's what I want to keep bringing to you. Some of these resources, some of these insights, some of these ideas, so that with these tiny little actions, you can have huge impact in your life. So please subscribe, join me in, in this, and I will uh, keep uh, bringing you some new resources. Also, if you want to get started on the mindfulness journey for the... Um, Last while since the pandemic, I've made my full Mindfulness 101 program available to you for free. Uh, just go uh, to saynotostress.com and you can access the full program for free. Uh, I just know it's so needed out there now and probably for a while to come because of all we've been through these past few months. So subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.